Hello everyone, this is Wes Sisko and welcome to RT Tech Connect. Today's feature product is the Bradford White Infinity K tankless water heater. This wall mounted unit comes in two models. It comes in a 160,000 BTU model and also a 199,000 BTU model. Top connections, 60 feet as far as on two inch when you're looking at venting, that's going to be intake and also exhaust. And on three inch, you're looking at a whopping 280 feet intake and also exhaust. It also has steady set technology. We'll talk about steady set as we go further along in the program. And the turn down ratio is 22 to 1. This is an industry best. When it comes to turn down ratios, typically you're looking at a 10 to 1 turn down ratio. So we'll talk about the benefits of that 22 to 1 turn down ratio. No need for a combustion analyzer, it's self calibrating. Also, the temperature and pressure relief valve is included. And the one thing you don't have to worry about is cobbling together the purge station. So the isolation kit is already built into the unit. Comes with a 15 year heat exchanger warranty and also a five year parts warranty. This is what I like to look at, the specs at a glance. When you're looking at specs at a glance, there's a few things I want you to notice. One is the UEF, which is that uniform energy factor, 0.92 and also 0.96. So on the 199 units, there's 0.96, and on the 160 units, it's a 0.92. The uniform energy factor is a standard by the DOE that all water heater manufacturers must meet. So now when it's crossed the board, everybody's being judged the same way. At a 0.96 for the 199, you couldn't ask for a better unit. When you're looking at GPM at 45, degree temperature rise, you're looking at 7 for the 160,000 unit and 8.7 GPM for the 199 unit. Some things to point out here. One is, I'd like you to take a look at the water connection and also the gas line connection. So on a gas line, across all sizes, you're looking at a three quarter inch line for the gas. And for the water line, you're looking at three quarters. We'll get into the gas line sizing a little later on in the program, but something to consider when you're swamping out a tank type water heater, the one thing to consider is when you're swamping out a tank type water heater and replacing it with a wall hung tankless water heater, in this case the Infinity K, you have to look at your gas connection. Typically you're looking at that tank type is half inch and then when you're looking at a tankless as this Infinity K, you're at three quarter. So we must adapt to the three quarter, but the biggest thing is to make sure we must understand is that we must meet the minimal inches of water column of gas pressure for the unit, whether it's natural gas or LP. So what's included? The water heater itself, your LP conversion kit, pressure relief valve, bracket and screws, course you're gonna have something to mount to the wall and also a manual if you happen to lose your manual no worries there go to www.bradfordwhite.com look up that tankless unit this infinity K and you can go ahead and download that manual if you need it accessories you can also look at aquastat connections in case you want to do something as far as on storage so you can have an Aquastat on a storage tank and you can feed this unit to a storage tank to get a little bit more storage. So the flexibility is there. If you need an Aquastat, we can make that connection. The other thing you're looking at is an NTC sensor. That's gonna be your negative temperature coefficient sensor. And that's gonna be um, incoming water temp, especially when you're setting up something like a recirc line. The extension cable only for the out there unit. And that's when you're looking at the touchscreen panel. If you wanna extend that, that cable is available for you also. The benefits of that 22 to 1, now we circle back to this. The one benefit, whether you're in the southern climates, is that the activation for this unit is a 0.45 GPM. If you look across and compare it to a conventional tankless unit, you're looking across all the different delta T's, anything from a 40 degree delta T up to a 60 degree delta T. So if you compare it to a conventional tankless, you look at the activation flow rates change, anything from one gallon all the way down to a 0.66 gallons. But yet, the Infinity Tankless, it's at a 0.45 right across all those Delta Ts. And that's in that southern climate. So let's talk about the northern climate. We're in the northern climate, nothing changes for the Infinity K. 0.45 for the activation across all Delta Ts from 60 degree Delta T all the way up to an 80 degree Delta T. And as you see, comparing it to a conventional Tankless, 
when you're using a buffer tank, well, you're looking at a 0.66 all the way down to a 0.5 for your GPM. So there's gonna be some fluctuations there. There's not gonna be even uh, temperatures. You may also suffer a little bit of a cold water sandwich. So it's something to consider when you're looking at this 22 to one turndown ratio, best in the business. Let's save some money. Saving money is real easy with this unit because now you're not worried about the extra piping. When it comes to a purge and isolation, when you're looking to descale the unit, it's already built in. The isolation valves and everything you need, and it even comes with a pressure relief valve. So let's look at the unit top and bottom. As you can see, the upper portion here, that's going to be the top of the unit, top connections. You're sliding a tank type out if it's a retrofit, and you're going to slide this tankless right in, marry those connections together, and you're off to the races. If you're looking at the bottom of this unit, once again, I said the isolation valves are already built in for you. So when it comes to time to descale, also your gas connections on the bottom also, boom, in and out. Let's think about a tank type water heater, gas connection at the bottom, and then you're looking at your inlet and outlet, they're at the top. So now you're looking at this unit, gas connection at the bottom, inlet and outlet at the top, slides right in. Let's get a little familiar with the unit itself. As you can see here, I'm not gonna go through each one of these. Of course, you guys can read these, but the biggest thing to point out is gonna be that blower, that self-compensating blower. This is one of the things that makes this unit stand out. Think about this. As the resistance of flow increases in that pipe, it ramps up. So it's self-compensating. This blower is the best in the business. No pressure switch required. So this blower itself is pretty, pretty amazing going to pick up the primary heat from the heat exchanger that secondary is going to scrub the rest of the heat away from the unit and because it's stainless steel it can handle any acidic condensate the other thing you're looking at is going to be a self-calibrating gas valve also there's a condensate trap and this unit has freeze protection built right in SRT that's going to be our scale reduction technology this is where the water is going to turbulate through the system in such a way where it's going to be very hard to build scale up on the side walls. So this will be the last unit to scale up. As in all instantaneous or say tankless type water heaters, you're going to have to do some descaling depending on the condition of the water. Right? If the water conditions are really harsh where you are, there's no water conditioning been done, and it's really hard water, it's going to scale up. But that's going to be any unit. This will be the last one to scale up. This display is very simple to operate. It has four buttons and you can get to all the different parameters you need to by just using this easy to use display. When it comes to venting, we talked about maximum length of pipe and notice it says two inch twin and three inch twin. When you're looking at venting this appliance, this appliance is made to be vented direct vent. That means you're going to have an exhaust pipe and you're going to have an intake pipe. You can go 60 feet on the exhaust pipe, 60 feet on the intake pipe, and that's going to be in two inch. And don't forget you have to count the elbows also for equivalent length. Elbows are typically five feet. They can be as maximum up to eight feet, but it depends on what you're using, what configuration piping. Three inch, 280 feet exhaust, 280 feet intake, which means that you're pretty much, what are we looking at here? 560 total feet, best in class, best in class. Concentric vet kits, 60 feet on two with a four inch and also three to five inch, which means that you have the two inch exhaust, four inch intake, three inch exhaust, five inch intake, 280 feet. This is gonna be the table right out of the manual. So I'm not gonna go through these, but it depends on your configuration this is kind of what you're looking for. So if you're looking at a bird screen, for instance, equivalent length is two feet on a bird screen. And then if you get down to an elbow, it's five feet, but you can see 10 feet on a T. So it all depends on how you're terminating and what you're using for your intake and exhaust. Also configurations. When you're looking to come out the sidewall, elbow up, right on out, make sure you snorkel up on the exhaust and you're looking at your intake, make sure it's pointing down if you're going to do what we call the snorkel one. And then of course, if there's going to be concentric vent kits, and there's several here on this graphic. Steady set technology, 
This gets rid of that cold water sandwich, so check out this video. Customers want a constant steady flow of hot water, but with other tankless products, this can be a problem. When the flow of hot water is temporarily stopped, say in between showers, some tankless water heaters shut off and allow cold water to enter the line. It's called a cold water sandwich, and when it happens, it's not pleasant. The new Infinity K virtually eliminates the problem with exclusive steady set technology. It uses stored energy in the heat exchanger to ensure a continuous flow of hot water without an internal buffer tank. An internal computer monitors the water and keeps the outlet temperature steady, even when the flow of hot water varies. That's smart, and steady set technology is always working, no matter how much hot water you use. There's a mixing valve. And this mixing valve is going to have the heat coming out, so you'll have a hot side, you'll have a mixed side, which is going to go out to the hot water outlet. So there's going to be a hot side, a cold side, and a mixed side. The mixed side is what's going to be feeding your hot water outlet. So if you look at the tankless unit with a buffer tank, now this is a little bit different. Now all of a sudden you have to charge the buffer tank, and you're going to send the water out of the buffer tank. And if you're pulling it out of a rate faster than it recover, then you're going to end up with a little cold water sandwich. So be careful there. The best way is the steady set technology is going to eliminate that cold water sandwich. So here's what they tested at. They'll call this the shower shave shower test. So you got two gallons in the shower per minute. Then you switch over to 0.5 for shaving. And then once again, you start that shower uh, two gallons per minute. And as you can see, the variance is going to be anywhere between, you know, plus or minus five degrees. That's going to be your dotted red line. And then you're looking at a tankless with a buffer tank as the orange line. And you can see when it goes to that 0.5 gallon trying to hunt and find that, that sweet spot, it's all over the place. They're getting all kind of cold water coming through. So they're getting spikes of hot and spikes of cold. So if we go over and look at the Infinity K, that's the blue line, you'll see slight spike when the water changed from two gallons to 0.5 gallons and then it pretty much steadies right on out because don't forget as we said before that 22 to 1 turn down ratio is gonna be our best friend right here recirc i get this question all the time can i do recirc with a tankless water heater the answer is yes you can now this tankless does not come with a circulator it must have an external circulator supplied it's a dry set of contacts and a maximum amperage is going to be 5 amps. If you need anything higher than 5 amps, you can actually go with an, a single pump relay controlling the circulator and then you use the dry set of contacts on that single pump relay like a thermostat. When you're setting up hot water recirc with the external circulator tied to the unit, then you can program the unit for different comfort levels. So as you see here, comfort level 1 has an 18 degree delta T all the way to comfort level 9, which is a 2 degree delta T. So the closer, or say the tighter the delta T, the warmer the water. So if you're at a 9 comfort level, the water is going to be warmer. It's going to be the warmest. If you're at a 1 comfort level, then it's going to float back a little bit. And that's going to be a little cooler. So you'll have to figure out where your comfort level is and dial it in. And that way you can adjust this control so you're saving energy, but also providing recirc. When it comes to setting up this control, once you, you know, got it on the wall, it's all powered up, you got it piped up, and also the gas line, whether it's going to be natural or propane, at this point, typically, when you're looking at a condensing type uh, combustion, you'd have to set up a combustion analyzer. Well, not in this case. You do not need a combustion analyzer at all. This unit is self-calibrating. Before we can self-calibrate though, we have to consider something. One is gas line sizing. This is just a little snippet out of the manual. This is the one for natural gas. I also have the one for LP. But let's go back to the natural gas for a second. So on the natural gas, you'll see half inch and the equivalent length, right? 10 feet, 20 feet all the way across. Depending on the inches of water column coming in, in this case, it's eight inches water column or greater for this pressure chart. So that's a really good gas pressure. Then of course you can do half inch and you can do half inch on a 199 all the way up to 40 feet and of course with a reasonable amount of elbows and fittings in line. If we switch over and said the same thing with LP, once again 
If you're looking at a single or second stage low pressure regulator on the appliance, you're meeting that minimal requirement. So that means that you can do 20 feet for 200,000 BTUs, 199,000 BTUs would fall right in there. But please remember there's a three quarter connection to the unit. When you're looking at self calibration, it's really easy to do. This is directly out of the manual itself. So what do you want to do? You want to press and hold simultaneously the P, the plus, and the minus. Hold them for uh, three seconds. And then you're going to go ahead and use the plus or minus to, to move around. So we're going to get all the way till we see UC, which is our combustion automatic adjustment. Once we get to the UC, we're going to push P. Then we're going to turn on a tap, because you'll see this little tap symbol show up. And that tap symbol is going to illuminate until enough flow for you know through the unit so it can self calibrate so you're going to turn on a few faucets get this thing to self calibrate once it goes through self calibration you'll see a ca blinking once it's blinking that means it's already set up you can hit p to exit and you're done you don't have to worry about grabbing the combustion analyzer at all so on a job like this, manometer will probably be your best friend coming in, measure the in, uh, inches of water column for the gas, but you can leave that, the uh, combustion analyzer right on the truck. Converting it over to LP, real easy to do. There's, there's uh, four bolts that you're gonna take out. Take those four bolts out, pull the plate, pull the orifice, replace them with the LP orifices, slide them right back in, and I have a video to show you exactly how that works. If you have customers that need propane versus natural gas, no problem. Many tankless units make you buy a completely different unit for use with propane, or a separate conversion kit. The Infinity K handles propane and natural gas with the same model, and the parts you need are included. The Infinity K lets the installer switch operation from natural gas to propane quickly and easily, right at the point of installation. The unit can be converted in less than two minutes by changing out the restrictor plate and selecting LP gas on the control panel. So now we talked about converting it from natural gas to LP, let's talk about cascading. We can cascade up to 24 units by the means of a cascading cable, which is something we have to purchase separately. And then you're looking at a couple things. One is the primary unit will rotate every 100 hours and the primary unit itself will not initiate a call for heat for the secondary unit until it reaches 85% of its demand. So if the demand is only 80%, that one unit will fire. But once it reaches 85%, it will call the Calvary and ask for help and have another unit kick on and so forth and so on. And once it's at 30% or less, it will drop out and lean on the rest of the units in the system. A lot of redundancy there. Diagnostics. Those four buttons and that LCD display, you can pretty much go through any one of these and find out exactly what's going on with this unit. Very self-explanatory. This Infinity K, cat's meow. This unit is pretty much bulletproof. I've been on a lot of job sites. This unit's been out three years now for Bradford White. And uh, like I said, I've been on a lot of job sites with these units and the customers are psyched. They love this unit. So if you don't have an Infinity K, I would say run out and get one today. This is a great, great little unit. Well, that does it for this presentation. If you have further questions, please feel free to contact us at info at My name is Wes Sisko. Thank you very much.